we've got, uh, as you said, Kepra alongside me now. The, the total was terrific. The position of South Africa is terrific. Conditions are good for batting, we know. But it's all got to start from a foundation. Kepler Vessels, former opening batsman for a couple of countries, as we know also, is going to have a closer look here at the work that Dean Elgar did and also Aidan Markram. I mean, it's just for starters, Kepler, just terrific. There's a nice little uh, an opening stand, an opening partnership. You know what it means to have a good pair together and doing, doing some uh, work for a well, country. Well, if you look at good test teams over the years, most of them have had good opening pairings. South Africa have struggled lately to find one. But uh, in the first test match, the two of them combined really well in that first innings, and they did so again in this innings in my view even better in uh, in this innings they were absolutely superb and what it was was copybook opening batting yep. from both of them and uh, that's why i enjoyed it so much I, I just thought that they did exactly what an opening batsman at test level is supposed to do and two completely different techniques as well which is left left to right but the techniques are very different yeah and, and you hit the nail on the head there the left right hand combination at the top of the order is so beneficial because it just upsets the line of the bowlers and they complement one another really well because they run so well between wickets so they're rotating the strike all the time i'm thinking towards the season coming up, India and also Australia. I mean, the left-right hand, how much of a difference does that make against the really good teams as well? Well, it helps. Uh, but as you step up the level, those bowlers are also more used to bowling to the left-right handers and adjusting. But uh, it's always going to help. And, and as far as I'm concerned, it's always an advantage. OK. Right, let's just have a look at uh, Dean Ilga. I know you like this, the way he goes about it. This is early in his innings, by the way. Well, I do, because why I say it's copybook opening batting is because he establishes where his off stump is initially, he leaves well, then he forces the bowlers to bowl at the stumps, he forces them to bowl straighter, then he capitalizes on the leg side, it's risk-free batting, and then he slowly starts to expand, but he expands with straight drives first, full face of the bat, again, risk-free stuff, and only later on does he start to play more square of the wicket and does he, um, does he bring those pull shots into it? If you stop it there a little bit, I'm just going to uh, give you a look at what he does. And so he sets up really well like that, leaves really well early, so he establishes exactly where the off stump is. So the bowler then has to bowl straighter at the stumps. They err in line a little bit, clips them off the pads, all risk-free stuff. Then they get a little bit fuller, and he's straight down the ground. And what's important there, it's all with a full face of the yep. bat. So again... No, no risk attached to that. And then only once he gets to 40 or 50, you see him play more square of the wicket there and bringing that pull shot into play. So that is the perfect way. If, if anybody's watching as an aspiring opening batsman, that is the way you set up an innings at the top of the order. And what happens there is the, what's the, the bowlers lose patience. So you're, you're leaving so well, yeah. you're watching the ball go closely, and then they bowl to your space where you want them to bowl. That's exactly what you want them to do, because as soon as they start to bowl straighter, if they in tight at the stumps, well, then you've got to be prepared to defend. But uh, sometimes, and particularly in this innings, they, they were too much leg side. And then he was just clipping them off there, and that's all risk-free stuff, as I said. And against Bangladesh, you do get those free bits, which does help. Right, this is, this is him saluting, just going to his uh, 50. I just wonder, just what about this shot, Kepler, when he went to 50? Well, we all like this shot, and, and the reason why it's so good is because he hardly hit that ball. It was just an extended defensive shot. And his timing was superb, but it was superb because his weight transfer through that shot was so good and he played that ball so late. OK, so I mean, uh, it's just a, we'll, we'll see a couple of replays here as well. Where, I mean, everything is just so good, it's so crisp. As you said, the foundation's there. But this to me is a pugnacious, typical punch from Dean Elgar. It is, short little back lift, so uh, very, very little margin for error there. But just look how well he transfers his weight forward. And he plays that ball underneath his eyes, which is exactly what you have to do. Right at. So we're just going to look at that one more time and then go to something else, which I think is quite interesting. And, and look at how the game has changed. When you and I were growing up, Kepler, mm. it was all about, of course, going, going well yeah. forward and right back and making yeah. sure you're using the crease. Back to the quicks, well forward to those things pitched up. This is batting in a box at its best. Look at this. Look at that foot movement. Yeah, and what's impressive about this is uh, how he plays the ball, the full face of the bat. But it has to be said, I mean, you can only do that on a really good surface where there's not a lot of seam movement uh, available to the bowlers. If the ball moves around a little bit more, you're going to have to, you'll have to use your feet more. But uh, he's set up really well. And, and the good thing there is that although he's not going forward and back too much, he's staying very balanced and his head position is very still. So he, he very rarely gets himself into a bad position. Is there a lesson there as well for any youngsters watching this that you don't these days have to, if the conditions are good, 
you can actually, if you make sure your balance is spot on, that is the most important thing, and you don't have to go ex excessive yeah, movements. Yeah, I think the key with that is you've got to let the ball come to you, and that's yep. exactly what he did. So he wasn't anxious early on in his innings. Obviously very confident after that 190-90 in potch, and, and when you're confident and you relax, you let the ball come to you. Sometimes when you're anxious, you try and go at the ball too much. So that's exactly what he did, and that's why he didn't need to move his feet uh, all that much. AB de Villiers does that as well in years gone by, and again back to maybe your area. Was there too much emphasis on getting to the pitch the ball and getting right back and across. Yeah, I think there probably was. I think what happens if you're trying to get there too much, you end up planting that front foot and you end up planting it too early and, and, and you're looking to get forward too much. So, so your, your weight distribution ends up being forward uh, excessively, which then makes it difficult for you to move again and you get yourself into trouble. Okay, right. Uh, help me with this. This is Pottsstrom on this side, of course. Bloemfontein, 199 and a, and a really good 100, of course, in Bloemfontein. I don't quite understand why he's getting himself in a bit of a tangle here, Kepler. Well, I think the slow surface in Poch um, led to what was happening here. But if you look closely at the pull shot and you look at the feet positioning there, I think, I think Dean Elgar, when he comes up against better bowlers later on, he's going to have to get back into the crease a little bit more if he right. wants to execute that pull shot successfully, particularly against quicker bowlers. And, and also, that delivery is quite wide outside off stump. So it's very difficult to control the pull shot when it's as wide outside the off stump as that one is. So maybe a sensible option would be to let that one go, wait for one a bit close to the stump support. And I think also he was just trying to control, just yeah. sort of get around what for is one. Good, what is good there though is that he's got good extension of the arms, which you, which you want when you play that pull shot. But that was just a little bit too wide and he needs to get a bit deeper into the crease. And importantly, we don't want to take anything away from the yeah. knock because he was on 199. But let's just have a look at Potter, uh, Blumfontein. Yeah, different type of story, different, uh, different pitch. This one was onto him a little bit quicker. He was a fraction deeper into the crease, which is good, but I think he just got done for pace there. I think that that ball was quicker than he thought, couldn't control it, and uh, got that top edge, couldn't keep it down. So I think it was just uh, he got done for a, a little bit more pace than he thought there was. And is that something that, uh, again, he just needs to bear in mind for later on in the summer? Well, I think when they play against India and Australia, I think they'll test him more with a short right. ball. And I think they'll try and tuck him up in the body a, a little bit more. I'm sure he's aware of that. I mean, he's played against all those bowlers before. Uh, and a couple of months ago in England. Exactly. And they tested and, him, and so I'm sure he'll do some work on it. But it is, you look, you're always, even though he's scoring runs, you're always trying to take something out of scoring runs. You're never just going to be complacent and sit back. So Dean Elgar is, is, is pretty studious as far as his batting is yep. concerned. So I'm pretty sure he will work on that aspect. And he's done it so well against the quicks in yeah. the past. Maybe it's the not so quick here that's yeah. undone him a little that's bit. It. Who knows? Yeah. Right, uh, something that I want to have a look at here is the uh, the strike points of Dean Elgar. Now, the first thing we've got to take in consideration here is the fact that these bowlers are not quick. It's going to be yeah. different when you're facing an air, as he has in the past, and the Mitchell Johnson on debut, different when he's going to be pushed back in the yeah. crease. But this is good, this is nice, all the yellow balls, the boundaries, that's all nice through there. But this is the point I'm making. There's nothing here. There's no back and across. Yeah. No one is forcing him yeah. back, so the game's a little bit easier. But it's for the conditions we've got and everything we're seeing right now, I mean, that's all really, really good as far as I'm concerned. Well, it is, and you do what you have to do. So here you've got an easy pace surface. You've got bowlers who really get above that 135 mark, so you've got time. And uh, he did it superbly well. Yep. Uh, it, it was just the fact that there, there's no much, there wasn't much of a previous movement at all. His head was really still. He knew exactly where his off stump was, and uh, it was just a, a really good effort. Okay, but right, now uh, this is something to, to bear in mind. And again, we're looking mm. again further in the sea. I mean, the Kookaburra Telegraph travels pretty quickly. Yeah, so say. looking down the down the, the season as we go, this is Bangladesh in Potchefstroom in the first Test match, and you can see it again. They were all over the show with their with their deliveries in the in the first Test. But they worked on it. They worked on a plan and got things a little bit more condensed as we went along for the uh, for the next Test match. Yeah, they did. Uh, you still see, uh, and this is where, if, you, if you're moving towards the quicker bowlers, particularly Hazelwood, Mitchell Stark, that type of thing, that's where they're going to be targeting Dean Elgar. They'll be bowing into his body and then the occasional wider one hoping that he'd pull. But if you look at what Bangladesh did, they try to get a few out there yep. at wide and, and hoping that he'd, he'd get onto the pull shot there and, and, and not be able to control it. So that's going to be the challenge for him. Generally speaking, if the ball is in that area, you can get underneath it. And if it's slightly wider, 
it can just sway away and drop his hands. So uh, that, that right would be no, the so two ways. Something coming through there, he can just drop, yeah, it. Just drop in, his hands. In fact, that's something he's been really good at, is dropping the hands and getting underneath that in the past. And also, when it's uh, when it's coming down at him at 145 around there, he's not going to be thinking about the hook shot or the pull shot. He's either just going to get underneath it when it's on that line, or he's going to drop his hands and let it uh, slide past him if it's outside or something. Okay, so we've got a huge tick to, uh, to Dean Elgo, yeah. but the season has only just begun. But what a way to start for him. Well, it is. And, um, it's, it's so good from an opening point of view if you start the season like this because it just gives you confidence. It's a pity, though, that, that he's going to have to wait so long now before the next Test match because ideally you'd want him to go into Test matches against the better sides in this sort of form. Let's talk about his partner. Yeah. What do you like about his partner? Well, there's very little I don't like. Uh, it's, a, it's an impressive package, what we see. It's a, it's a very good setup. It's a well, very... well, let's, talk, let's talk through this for starters. What do you like about this? I mean, uh, this, is, this is nice, right? Well, I like the head position. I like how still his head position is. I like the way that he's a, he's a tall guy, so he stands up nice and tall. He's controlling this whole area there. And that setup is all good. And what I really enjoy about him, and, and also if we run it on a bit, what I really like about it is the fact that um, he plays so well through the leg side. Uh, he's so well right. balanced. Balance he capitaliz good. capitalizes on, on everything on the onside. And again, that's good opening batting because that's your risk-free area there. He plays so well there, gets onto off stump, uh, plays it underneath his eyes, and he, and he scores every time the ball's on his path. So that's exactly what you want to do because you can't get out there really, and that's where you're maximizing what you want to do on that leg side. That's an area that he needs to gonna have to work on because if we take it back a little bit and we well, look uh, at the position of the okay, back foot. Okay, let me see foot, if I can do that. Yeah, yeah, if you see can. With this. Yeah. So, so what happens, that back foot there stays there too long, and, and on a number of occasions, during yeah, the you're innings, about the back foot there. The back foot goes, doesn't really get past leg stump, doesn't come across. So what then happens is that he plays square of the wicket on the offside too much. So if you have somebody like a Joss Hazelwood that's going to attack that channel outside the uh, on the fourth stump line yep. and bowl just short of a length, if your back foot doesn't come across there and you play it underneath your eyes, you're going to nick off. So that's definitely an area that he's going to have to work on. So the back foot comes across, but it comes across too late. Right. And that's a problem. So he'll definitely have to give that some attention. Okay. Right. So again, just starting brilliantly. And, 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 he, and he said it's, it's something he's, it's, he's going to remember it for the rest of his life yeah. that day yesterday. Yeah. And, and quite rightly, you made 100 on debut for Australia in Brisbane. Uh, one thing I want to look at here is uh, we looked at the seam. Look at these strike points against mm -hmm. Tigel. Left arm orthodox spinner. Look at these strike points. I mean, this is just so nice to see that he's prepared to get right out there and use his feet as much as possible to spinners. Well, he did. He's very quick on his feet too, and he was. And he picked the right deliveries to come down the wicket too. And he met them and met them on the half volley. And he timed them superbly through mid on and through mid wicket, which was uh, uh, really good to see. Right. On. To me, the strongest point about Mark, and we've touched on it. Let's just talk, let's look at it again is the fact that his balance is just absolutely brilliant yep. through here. I mean, he's been well coached, obviously, as a youngster. I just think the fact that, and we'll see him move his feet a little bit more, and that's going to happen, I guess, against uh, the likes of the Bangladesh bowlers. He's not going to bowl, uh, be batting in that box and, uh, and, and just staying in this sort of area. But I just think we're going to have a situation where he's going to use his feet more against these seamers, and his balance is so good, and he's got time. No, he does, and he does get a stride in, and he does play with the full face of the bat, which is, uh, which is good to see. He plays pretty well off the front foot and, and the back foot. As I said, there's just that one little area he needs to work on, and that's to get that back foot across when he plays back at different times. Okay. Right, now the final thing we're going to look at, Kepler, this was uh, the press conference mm. yesterday. It was interesting. The captain, Bangladesh captain, Ms. Vicker, made this statement. Now, bear in mind, they were thrashed in Potchester. Mm. They're under the pump here in Bloemfontein. I thought this statement, let's just go through it, I thought this was an, an astounding statement for an international captain to make. This was yesterday after day one. I think it was my mistake to win the toss. I have been trying to do everything honestly for the last 12 years. But in these last two games, it seems I'd been better had I lost the toss. I think it is my personal failure. This astounded me. Yeah. I'm not able to motivate my players or guide my bowlers. How do you read that? Well, it's a massive problem. I mean, if you think winning the toss is a disadvantage, you've got a problem, number one. And if you think you can't motivate your, play, your players, you've got a bigger problem. And I think he made two glaring errors. I think they were a little bit frightened to bat in Poch and they were a little bit frightened to bat in this game. And when you think about it, Bangladesh's strength is to play two spinners, bat first and try and put pressure on the opposition. And, and in, on both occasions, 
they weren't game to do that. So the, fr the, the scary thing is that you can't avoid batting for the whole test match. You have to bat sometimes. So, and you only put the opposition in if you really think that you can bowl them out on day one or you can get a number of wickets on day one. So I think from a, a mental point of view and, uh, and a psychological point of view, I, th I don't think he's sending a good message no. to his team. And, and certainly he's not in a good space. OK, what do you think South Africa's going to do, just briefly? Yeah, I think South Africa attack for half an hour or so, get to 550 and then uh, put all the pressure that they can on Bangladesh. Chopper, good stuff. Nice insight on opening Thanks. batting. Thank you. Thanks. Right, Pom, back to you in the studio, mate. Thanks, Paige. We like how you draw <laughs> those lines, by the way. <laughs> you even managed to put a line on the quotation. That's pretty good, huh? don't you think? Very good. That, that, <laughs> impressive. Yeah, very impressive. But what is worrying is the statement itself. Mm. Is it not at Ali Khan? It, it is. Uh, being a captain of uh, any team, uh, you can't just go on to say that, that uh, winning toss is, is, is not that I'm not looking forward to. Had he lost the toss, and then it would have been up to South African uh, captain, Feb WC, what to do. You got to take it on your chest. You got to take it on as a captain. You need to understand that if you win the toss and you've decided to bowl first, which he did, yeah, he could have said that I could not actually, I could have asked a little bit more for my bowlers because mm. the bowlers didn't do their job. Mm. I felt there was something in, in the pitch. It was more here, obviously, because we heard from Akram in that interview that Faf was also not sure whether to bat or bowl. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. You can go ahead and make a wrong choice of not going uh, to bat on. But if you're going into bowl first, you can't just uh, blame yourself or say like, I, w I was not uh, being able to guide my players or rather direct them in the direction which I would have asked them to do. It's your job as a captain to pass the message. I've won the toss. I've decided to bowl first. That's it. But the, your job is to bowl at the areas which I would like you to bowl at. Mm -hmm. Don't bowl all over the place. If you keep on bowling all over the place, four and a half runs in an over, 58 boundaries yesterday. So what's, who's at fault? It's not the captain himself, mm -hmm. it's the bowlers also. Mm -hmm. So they've got to give, keep reminding themselves over and over again. It's a tough job as a captain. Don't, uh, don't miss out on that thing because it's not easy. It's not easy for the bowlers also. And it, it's made even tougher, I guess, um, Atta, when you come up against teams. And let's um, put context into this. Mm. And, and the context being that Bangladesh come to South Africa after a period of playing at home where they have pushed big sides at home and even knocked over big sides. So perhaps it's a case of a management of expectation, expectation of self and of the team. Absolutely, and it's a, it's a big part of what you do as a leader and as a, as a, as a coach and a management team. But, uh, but uh, we, we spoke about it at the beginning of the, of, the, of the test match, and it's important thing is to find a Bangladesh solution to the problem. I, I think South Africa were only considering bowling because, no disrespect to Bangladesh, but because they were playing Bangladesh in these conditions and they wanted to pick up on what happened in the first test. It was a bat first wicket, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that FAF was considering it was because of, of, of that factor. Bangladesh got caught up in it. What they need to ask the right question, and their right question is, what is our strength, and how can we possibly win this test match? And the way to possibly win this test match is to play two spinners and have South Africa bat last. That's the way they're going to do it, mm. and that's and that's a Bangladesh solution to the, to the problem, as opposed to what would South Africa do? And I, I reckon what happened is that he got caught up in in the media, got caught up in the talk about the green wicket and the pace, and and, and that's one of the reasons why we saw the change of the change of bowlers so early in the, in the match. It wasn't the fourth or fifth over when, when the camera panned in and you're shaking his head and you realise I've made a mistake here. Mm. We should not have bowled first. That's captaincy, and, and I always say if you you captain the national team, you're going to have to want to do it. Mm. And that doesn't really come across in that statement. But um, I, I still think they asked themselves the wrong questions and therefore got the wrong answers. But you can't shy away from it, no. can you? Um, um, Atai, you've still got, as you say, take it on the chin and, and sort of look what you can do after this occurrence. Have some sort of response that's going to have an outcome that be good enough for your side. Is he the guy? I say, is he the guy? Because that statement says, I don't know if I'm the guy. Uh, that is a very confusing kind of a statement. Mm. I mean, I've not heard or you know, in any of the press conference, he's not said that before. Mm. You see, if you look back at his career as a captain in the last year and a half, he's been very good. Mm. You talk about the wins against Australia, you talk about the wins against England, you talk about the win overseas against Sri Lanka to square mm. the series, mm. has been brilliant. Mm. But you will always find yourself in a position where you're trying to do something and it has not worked in your favor. Mm. And you've got to accept that and you've got to take it in your chin. Mm. So it's important as a captain and as, as a player 
to go ahead and try to do something different. Okay, if things have not worked in our favor, fine. But this is a different session. Let's go and try to do something different. You talk about, okay, fine, we're probably hoping to uh, South Africa to declare. Think about the batting part now. Yeah. What about the batsmen? Can they put up a better show? They've already scored 320, which is the highest runs for Bangladesh against South Africa, in South Africa. Can they better that? Yeah. And I think it's very much possible. I think you've got to go and express yourself. And it's also responsibility of the captain to take the best out of the players, mm -hmm. whether he can inspire them, encourage them, or guide them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's all up to him. Mm -hmm. It's it's a two-way traffic, I think, for me. It's not about just the captain, but yeah. also the players. Yeah. Is, how important is the coach in this? Because whilst we speak about this, Mushfiqur is mm. how old? How old is he? What, 28? 20 28, 28, 28 years 28, old yeah. or whatever. And that's a young man in general life. So the coach's role in here to say, you're okay, you're still our guy. Oh, it's huge, it's massively important. And, and our, our, the whole management team takes responsibility for the decision. He doesn't walk out there and mm -hmm. just say, I'm gonna bat and I'm gonna bowl and nobody else says that. That's been a part of the discussion. There's absolutely no doubt about it. So that's part and parcel. We've, we've made this decision. At the end of the day, he makes the call. He's the mm -hmm. captain. And if there's any, if, there's, if they need someone needs to make the final decision, he does as the captain. But I think the important thing to understand is not only is you need to learn to bat and bowl in different conditions, you need to learn to captain in different conditions. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw Emma Stone, he's a brilliant captain, in, in India, learned to captain away from India mm. because his field angles were different, where he put players and how he did it. And it took him a while for him to understand how to captain in Australia and how to captain in England. And it's very different. And that's something that he needs to understand. That's where the coach plays an important part. Just learn. You know, the same as you go to a batsman and talk about how you play in these conditions where the ball bounces more, the same thing happens to the captain. You need to help him and learn to understand.